Many are glad to be here today. We have lots to be thankful for. It's a real honor and privilege for me to be here uh, after what's happened with our church. This is a real honor to be standing and just uh, addressing and bringing forth the word. Um, it's really, it's just it's amazing. The Lord has provided amazing things, and, and the pastor is going to share that later. But I'd like to, to pray for the Presbyterian Church and the people who are involved in this whole thing right now. I'd like to lift them up. Father, you know who they are, all the members. We just thank you, Father, that we are privileged people, and so are they, Father God. I just pray that, that the unity of the Spirit, the unity of brotherhood, would come and and through the church and through the Presbyterian Church and everybody, Lord, that there would be love, Father God, that we would experience the love of Christ through our members and through each and every one of us, Father. Amen. And I just give you praise and I give you glory and I give you honor now for them in Jesus' name. I'm not sure about you, but I've never been through anything that's going on through like this. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, I know that, um, like I, anyway, I don't want to get into it, but it's, it's really, I think, again, I count it an honor and privilege to be here to go through this fire in such a public manner. And I believe it strengthened us. Has it brought us closer together? I hope so. Because the early church didn't grow without trials. They didn't grow without things. I mean, what we've gone through is nothing like what's gone through, what the early church went through, and what people in the other parts of the world are being martyred for, their faith. But still, this is a little taste, a taste of testing, right? And I really believe that it's important for us to do it. Because after all, a seed that is planted must first die before it can grow. A seed that is planted must first die before, it's, before it can grow. And uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 35 to 38, if you've got your Bibles there, in 35 it says, But someone will ask, How are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? You foolish person, what you sow does not come to light unless it dies. Interesting. And what you sow is not the body that it is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps of wheat or of some other grain, but God gives it a body as he has chosen, and each kind of its seed, its own body. So what's happened today that Pastor Albert was that seed in our case. He, was, he had to die. He surrendered his will, his all in all, and sacrificed everything for our church, I believe. The seed will grow into a mighty fruit like we've never, ever seen before. It won't look like anything that we may think or ask or think about it. Amen? Amen? Can you agree with that? It's going to be huge. This is a glorious time. This is a glory time for us to actually experience such an incredible, I think, it's an outpouring of spirit. Amen. And his mercies are new unto us every morning, and his manna is fresh. Manna is fresh out of the very presence of heaven, out of the oven of heaven, I should say. He tested us to see what we're made of, and the refined fire has burnt off some unnecessary dross that is keeping the gold from reflecting his very image and perfection in us and through us. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised to those who love him. The crown of life. It's not just life, it's the crown of life. The crown fits on your head. What's on your head? What's in your head? It's your mind, it's your spirit, your soul. It's, I mean, it's your psyche. It's your very presence of who you are. Your life is in your head. James 1, 2 to 4 says, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness, and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. 
Amen? We don't want, we don't want to be tested. It's not something, I don't want to put my hand into the fire. <laughs> I don't want to go into there. But you know what? We need it. We do need it. We need to go through it. Amen? In Luke 8, it's the parable of the seed. Jesus said in verse 13 to 15, And the ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy. We're talking about the seed. But these have no root. They believe for a while, and in time of testing, fall away. And as for what fell among the thorns, they are those who hear. But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. As for that in the good soil, they are those who, hearing the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit with patience. Did you know that corn cannot be grown in greenhouses? Ever wrong with that? Because it won't produce a cob of corn. Bye, ladies. Nice to see you. Bye. <laughs> Come again. <laughs> Bible study. Friday night. <laughs> so corn will not produce an ear of corn in a greenhouse. Isn't that interesting? Even though it's the perfect conditions, it won't, it won't produce any fruit. Because it needs the wind. It needs the elements. It needs the outside. It needs the natural environment in for it in order to produce. And did you know that, here's another interesting little thing for you to take home. You know the silk and corn? You know the stuff in there? That is the germination pollen, but that's where the is pollinated from each. There's one for every kernel. Yeah. There's a silk in there. Yeah. And also, if you take that silk and dry it, you can make it into a tea. It's extremely healthy for you. Yeah. Didn't know that, did you? <laughs> now you know. I'm going to go home and strip that corner off. It's actually quite good tea. <laughs> it's good tea. And one of the things, too, is you have to read that, uh, you know, churches that have really thrived, have really gone through things, that have really produced fruit, are those that have gone through trials and lots of things. Like, for example, there, uh, there's a church in town, the, the community church uh, that I know, uh, Dwayne Gerson, beautiful brother, beautiful pastor and everything. That church has gone through a lot of trials, a lot of trials. And you know, he almost lost his son, got healed, um, and, and the congregation has gone through splits. And but they now they're growing, they're bloom, they're booming. Yeah. They're just going through the roof, literally. And and because of that steadfastness of the trials that they've gone through. So if you're going through a trial in your life, don't disregard it. Don't get mad at God. Don't turn away from it. Don't say. Uh, you know, I'm going to turn away from my faith. Some people have, unfortunately. There's a lot of people who aren't in the church today who are not within the congregations because they've turned away because of testing, the trials, right? Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. Like, I'm, as you know, I'm a runner. And the only way that I can run is through t trial. To test. I, have to te I have to go through the exercises to do that. Sometimes I get hurt. And they don't do, it doesn't make me stop from running. No. It just makes me want to run harder and run faster and everything else, right? And so uh, it's important, and I'm just using that as an example, but it's important for us to be able to accept it and call it, bring it on, you know? Job, he went through, look at the hell that he went through, right? And look what happened to him. It was amazing what the fruit was produced from as a result of his trials. Um, Another thing too is that God will send things and people across your path will send things across us to, in order to test us. You know, we had, <laughs> I'm sure we've got all people in our lives who are testing us all the time, right? <laughs> we've had a few people in our lives, but it's, it's important for us to realize that love will conquer it, but it's also it will produce the fruit that God wants, not our fruit. But, I mean, it'll be our fruit through, through uh, He's working through us, but it will be a, a living fruit. That he wants because he wants us to be like him 
He's the pattern son. Jesus is the pattern son. And if we, if the body of Christ on, church, on the earth would, would grow into that body, he's the head, we're the body, he would return. That's why he hasn't returned. Because we're all over the place, I think. I believe that the, the church doesn't know what we should be doing. Too many people are waiting to be raptured out of here. Too many people are waiting for something big to happen. Too many people are not just going through the trials and tests to come into the, the very image of Christ in us, right? And we can't do that on our own. The only way we can do that is die itself. Romans 12, 1 to 2. Appeal, I appeal to you, brothers, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. There you go. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. By testing. That's the only way you can, we can find it out, right? And that word, by the way, I've, we've talked about this many times, do not be conformed to this world, but transform is the word, Greek word metamorpho, which means transformation. So the renewing of your mind is how you are transformed into something different from what this mortal nature is, into more immortality. You know, the word, that word, metamorphosis, in the natural world shows us the essence of what changing from one thing is to another. Caterpillar into a butterfly, a nymph into a, a little water nymph into a dragonfly, etc., etc. When Jesus was transfigured into light in the Mount of Ascension, when he went up there, that is the only other word, time that word is transformed, is used, metamorpho. It's, that's when he was transformed, transfigured, or transformed. He was metamorphed from mortality into immortality. He, was, he, he showed us what immortality was like, even before he went to the cross. Right? So he showed us what, that it can be done here on earth. I mean, obviously, with his hell of birth, death, and his resurrection is the only way that can happen. And he said, I am the light of the world. The light, because he was transformed, transfigured into light. And that word actually means physical light. If you look it up in the original Greek, it means light, physical light. Every time it's used, even in Hebrew, it means physical light. Now, I know there's some people who have uh, attained, or there's some religions out there, that's what their whole goal is, reincarnation over and over and over again, to go into light of some kind. And there's evidence, apparently, of people who have done that. I'm not saying that we should do that. I'm just, from that point of view, because that's the physical entities of us trying to do something, but it's God working through us. When we die to self, when we no longer become us, that he is completely in us, that new seed that raised up, that's the new body that's, that he's formed of him, his body, then he will return. Simple. I mean, that's, I'm talking about the whole body of Christ, right? So, um, James 1.12 said, Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. I've already said that. Um, Hebrews 12, by the way, that's going to be our first chapter on Friday, Hebrews 12. We're going to go back and finish off Hebrews 12. And uh, it says, 12, I'm going to give you a little uh, insight here. 3 to 11 says, Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself, so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you, have you not resisted to the point of shedding your blood? And have you forgotten the exhortation that addresses you as sons? My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord. Do nor be weary when he reproved when he when reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the ones he loves, and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have to endure. God is treating you as sons. For what son is here whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline, in which all have participated, then you are Ill illegitimate children, and the, oh, the King James was bastards, and not sons. 
Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subject to the Father of spirits and live? For they disciplined us for a short time, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good, that we may share his holiness. For the moment, all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant. But later, it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. That's good, isn't it? Jesus is the pattern son, and he endured the cross and took the hit for us all. The cruelty of the cross and the blood that was shed for humanity trumps all of humanity's trials. But it is the act of sheer obedience and determination to suffer that trial that produces immortality. Fortunately, we don't physically have to go to the cross. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? But in our trials, we can identify with the cross, and by faith, we are perfected through our trials and faith. By that, we gain immortality. Romans 2, 6 to 7 says, He will render to each one according to his works, to those who by patience and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, he will give eternal life. I, I, this is a kind of an interesting sidebar, interesting question, but I can ask you this, this, this is kind of maybe a little out there, but how many uh, have met their great-grandparents? What? Your great grandparents? No? <laughs> but I remember. Yeah, when you were younger, yeah. Do you remember them? Yes. A little bit. A little bit? Yeah, yeah. The reason why I'm asking is because it's, it, it, you know, our lives are a, a grass sort of thing. You know, we don't remember people after too much after they're gone. My father passed away in 1980. I don't re I mean, he was 70 at the time, but I don't remember that much about him. I haven't, I don't, to be honest with you, I don't think about him all the time. Yeah, maybe on his birthday or something like that. But your lives are, um, you know, we come and go as, as in our human humanness. But we need to realize that all the things that we do here on earth, the only things that will be remembered about us is our character. We might be good looking, we might have lots of money, we might have prestige, we might have position, we might have that like that, but really, what it boils down to is character, and that's in the natural sense. So how much more when God is putting his nature into us is what we will be not only remembered by, but we will also live into that in, 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 uh, eternal uh, heavenly <coughs> place. And so the character that he's putting in us today is so important for us to realize that he is bringing that amazing Christ-like beautiful image of Jesus in and through us. Amen? Amen. I, I think it's an I think it's and the power that goes with that. You know, the things that we we don't even have even dreamed of. We haven't seen the power that's going to flow. And that's for this church today. I want to encourage every one of us that this is a new day. A new day today. Amen. Amen? Amen. A new day I think it's a new day. Thank you, Jesus. We are, the character of us and the character that Jesus is, is shaping through each and every one of us today will live on forever and will bring, will make a mark in, in society. But the most important thing is, it's not the, that's not the most important thing, it's to bring Jesus here into pit metals, into here and earth, where we live, where we are. And it's going to be, this is a beacon, this, has been pro, this place has been prophesied over many times of how it's going to be a beacon to the world. That's why it's called the Vancouver Revival Center. Yes. The Vancouver Revival Center, which covers all the lower mainland. It's not just a little tiny little pit meadows. Not that there's anything shabby about pit meadows, but it is a big church. Amen? Amen? And I think it's really that we are going to grow into that. It's going to be massive. And, and, and we, I can see this. I mean, yeah, that's why we're going to knock the walls down next door. We're taking, going to take over that place. So the trials that we're going through, the testings that we're going through, are just, we're moving on. We're moving up into the, into the kingdom, closer and closer to the kingdom. So don't count it, count it all joy that you're going through. Jesus went to the cross knowing what was beyond it. 
we got to go to the sometimes through our own process and through the things that are in our lives. But know that the joy beyond that is what's going to bring forth the fruit of righteousness, the fruit of His love and life in and through us. Amen? Amen. 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 So, um, I'd like to first of all, Pastor Alfred, maybe you want to come up here for a second? There's something important that just going that went on in their lives today. There's something important. Bless you. Thank you. It's their anniversary. Oh. <laughs> yes, amen. How many years? How many years? 35. Wow. wow. Congratulations. 35, you come alive. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are so glad. We are so blessed by you folks. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So, with that, um, if there's any prayer requests, uh, anything, um, anybody have anything that we're... You know what? Does that, anybody have a word to share? Any of you have a testimony that would like to share? Don't you all jump up once. <laughs> Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. We're just the family. Yes, Carol. Yes, Carol. Yes, Every day. 
be that we all are very second. God is wonderful. His word is the way, the truth, and life. Amen. This is what I'm learning. This is what I'm learning to live. Teach me, Lord. I ask him to teach me, to show me how to live his word, how to walk his word, how to breathe his word, how to see his word, how to hear his word. And to do that is to practice it, to read it every day. Every day. And for me, I watch and I listen to my best ability. My humanness tries to get in the way, but my spiritual is getting stronger each day, each hour, each month. And in that, it's because of His Word. His Word is truth. His Word is life. He shows you the way. And for me, I was on Vancouver Island, you know, I didn't have a vehicle and I went over for a funeral. And I was walking around and my brother seen me and said, what you doing? Well, I'm looking for a ride, I said. Come on. I jumped in his car and he started driving me. My wife and I own a house in Port Alberta in Vancouver Island. And he said, where's your car? I said, I don't have one. Oh, he got on his phone while we were driving and he phoned his son and he was, uncle doesn't have a car. <coughs> oh. And then we made, we made it to our to my place, and as we were sitting there, I was going to get out, and he, he invited me to his place. He lives in Ladysmith. He said, "Want to come visit me? Come out dinner with me? Okay, sounds good." So we as we we're driving, he must have phoned again. And then when we got to his place, I seen my nephew um, around a car, and I. When I got out, I went to go say hello to him. And as I was saying hello to him, and we gave each other a hug, he goes, he throws me the key. Here, wow. Uncle. He can have it. Wow. <laughs> That's God. Amen. That's God. Have you asked for it? Have for it? I trust it in his word. Yeah. He will not forsake us. He says, love us, love me with all your heart, soul, mind. Yeah. Love me. Yeah. Not, not my wife, not my children, not my friends. Yeah. But he says, love me. Yeah. Love me. In all things, Lord. Amen. Yeah. But I had to learn that. Yeah. I had to just have, ask him, teach me then, Lord. Teach me how to do this. Yeah. To love you with all my heart, soul, mind. Because mm -hmm. on earth, nobody can teach me that. Only That's right. God can. Amen. Amen.